Hey, and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today is Monday Q&A day. I am glad you're here. Uh, I am working on the Burnout Mystery Stitch Along now. It has started today. Woohoo! <laughs> there is a special Facebook event page where you can post your... Um, your crochet along and knit alongs going on. And so I've already started posting what I've started working up. And uh, of course, I'll be blogging along. So uh, welcome and good morning. If you are on the replay, be sure and type replay and ask your question if you need it, especially for the Burnett Mystery Stitch Along. I'm following along on needles. So if you do have a question, let me know. But the main place to go would be the Facebook page. I know that Mikey and Yolanda will be on there uh, checking out your questions. Uh, and I am here. Good morning <laughs> and welcome to my live viewers. Be sure and say hello and type your name and uh, or not your name. <laughs> type where you're from because your name pops up. <laughs> it's Monday. Hey, what can I say? Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Susan. Thanks for stopping in, Ada. Welcome. <laughs> I hope you are doing well today. Hope you had a good weekend. <laughs> so uh, we, we've we got Q&A day, and today uh, is the first day of the Burnett Mystery Stitch Along with Joanne. And uh, so I've started that, and so I'm kind of just, that's my day today. And so I'm actually blogging along with them, and so that means, like, I got to get my blog up by tomorrow. So I'm going to be, like, a, a super stitchy knitter today, <laughs> getting it all done. So <laughs> good morning, Barb. Hey, good morning, Ellie. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, she's in South Jersey. Barb's in Ohio. And uh, let's see, Ada... Ada, I'm trying to remember where Ada's from, and Susan, oh, my brain, <laughs> I know y'all popped on before, <laughs> welcome, so uh, is anyone doing the Burnett Stitch Along, just so I can know, and then uh, the crochet, actually the crochet looked fun, I wish I had time, I would do actually both, uh, but I'm going to attempt doing the, um, the, the Knit Along, which is, you know, the crochet is probably faster, but the knit along is going to be a good little challenge for me because um, I've loom knit blankets up, but um, I haven't knit up on needles a full blanket just because it's so big. Like I've done, you know, done knitting projects, obviously, but knitting a full blanket on needles is, um, that's a big task. So <laughs> you're crocheting, Ellie. Awesome. It, it, it probably is going to be pretty cute. Uh, Susan says she's in Pennsylvania on vacation from Ohio. How do you get the pattern? Um, yeah, good morning. Okay. So if you go to, um, now you can go to my blog. If you, if you lose all information and you're like, where do I go? Just so you know, if you go to goodknitkisses.com and type in the search bar Burnett, I mean, right, because I'll probably be adding blogs, but the main blog, um, is, uh, if you go to goodknitkisses.com slash Burnett dash mystery dash stitch dash along. But if you can't remember that, if you just go to my, my page and go to the blog and you can scroll through and look for the Burnett stitch along or type in the search bar. But the main, um, the main page is, let me get to it, is, um, joanne.com slash mystery dash stitch dash along. Um, and the links, the links for all these things are on my page. And that's why I'm saying, if you go to my blog, you'll find links for everything. And then, um, then there's actually a Facebook page for the event. And, um, it's not a, and it's not an event page. They like made it an actual page. Um, but it says, um, but the name of the link is, um, if you type Burnett stitch along, um, all together. Let me make sure. Yeah. Burnett stitch along. So, um, so it says, it says Burnett blanket stitch along, but, but I think if you type in facebook.com slash Burnett stitch along, um, you will find it. Um, they announced it. Um, you can click on the link, which takes you to joanne.com with the mystery stitch along. And then you go to the page and I'll flip it. I'll show you. Sorry. I've got like web pages up and then my tripods in the way. So let me flip it. And I'll show you what that page looks like. Let's see if we can get a screen going here. Oops. 
Okay, so the page looks like this. And then you come down here. Sorry, my, my tripod's in kind of an awkward position. But if you come here, since here's how it works, you go every Monday starting on the 3rd to get the latest clue. And then um, you the pattern comes together as you crochet and knit along. And then you can show off your project progress on that uh, Facebook page and put in hashtag handmade with Joanne. And so it tells you all your knitting supplies and all your crochet supplies, and then it meets your host. But if you'll scroll way down, this is where you get your clues. See mystery uh, dates. And then right here is where you go today. And then you click on download pattern or watch video or share. So I would download the pattern and then click watch video so that you can actually see it. And this is the pattern here. Okay. Woo. That's week one for the, um, for knitting and then you click on the video and it will be Yolanda for the knitting and I think I had clicked knitting somehow maybe if you click I don't know I forget how it is for the crochet but <laughs> anyway I know the knitting oh I'm sorry I just looked at that okay so knitting is first and then crochet is right below it I wasn't even reading it so let me, let me scroll back through your questions um Good morning. Good morning. Ellie says she's better at crochet. Good morning, Bridget. What am I talking about today? Um, right now I'm just talking about the burnout stitch along. Uh, good morning, Deborah. Joella. Hey, she's in New Mexico. Awesome. Hey, Joanne. I saw the skirt on your daughter. So, so cute. Um, so cute. She, she knitted up this really sweet skirt. Um, and she's working on her pattern. I can't wait to see it. Pam says, good morning. It's going to be so hard not to peek while I'm at work today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, Susan, good afternoon, Patricia. So yeah. So what I'm talking about today, um, right now I'm talking about the Bernat. Whoops. Sorry. I'm trying to adjust my camera. Uh, the Bernat stitch along and just letting people know about it. Cause I will be really talking about it every week because on Mondays, is when the clue comes out and then I'll like, I've got my knitting off to the side. I'm working on, this is my, my first color. Sorry. It's kind of a mess. <laughs> I had to mess with the, with, with the yarn barf inside. <laughs> so anyway, that's mine. And then I basically will be spending Mondays like knitting and, um, and working out my blog so that Tuesday will come out. Um, I'm also going to be, uh, I'm just kind of giving some housekeeping stuff. Uh, I'm going to be, uh, filming today the uh, the review and putting it up. Um, it'll either go up in the early in the morning or this afternoon for um, the book for Kathy Norris for the Loom Knitting Stitch Dictionary. And then it'll have a um, giveaway at the end of that for two books that Kathy's going to do. And uh, I was trying to, I, I was going to try and do it over the weekend. I'm like, no, 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 because I told her I was going to do it on Tuesday when we're doing the Loom Knitting Days. And so I'll talk about that tomorrow and be like, hey, by the way, check out the review on YouTube. So I want to stick to my schedule. I'm, I get antsy and I want to like do something ahead of time. So um, anyway, uh, so, the, so there's that. And then over the weekend, oh, Joanne says, she, you have the pattern done today? Oh, that's awesome. Will, will it be up on Ravelry? Um, you post to Ravelry, I think, yeah? Yeah. Um, I'll have to, I'll have to see it. Joanne did hers on a kiss loom, I think, which does outstanding stitches. Um, and then I would like to, I, they didn't give me permission cause I'm actually, I am blogging for Bernat. So, um, you know, that's the, I'm working with spin, right? Um, and so I am, uh, uh, it is a sponsored blog. So, but they didn't, I didn't ask them about, uh, they asked me to do it on needles. And so I didn't ask them about doing it on the loom yet, but that's my intention is to, because, uh, I've got to figure out how to work it on the loom and make sure what loom to tell you guys and stuff. So people who are loom knitting who are like, I want to join in, um, you know, you can try the crochet, you can try the knitting. Um, but if you haven't done it before, uh, you know, if you're a beginner, um, needle knitter, I would try just attempt it. You know, even if you do like a, a small, um, sample. Um, but as far as the loom goes, uh, it is 78 stitches. I think it's 78 stitches. Hold on. 
Um, it's US 11 needle, eight millimeter circular needles, 36 inch. Um, and then you need a pair of DPNs for later on um, or a cable needle. And let's see what else. Um, the gauge is eight stitches um, per four rows and 13, oh, sorry, eight stitches for four inches and 13 rows, uh, four inches in stocking net. And then I need to get, I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find something. Sorry. I'm looking for a crossover. Hold on. You're good at knitting Ada. Um, I'm looking for a crossover here. Hold on. So this says the needle size is us 11. I'm looking at my, I'm looking at my own book cause I don't have it memorized. Um, the needle size is 11. So that means you would need a large gauge loom. It's going to be a five eighths, um, or 11 sixteenths. Um, so that would be, um, uh, the 11 sixteenths, I believe the knitting board, um, the big 28 inch, um, I think that's 11 sixteenths, um, knitting board. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but the knitting board, um, the 28 inch, uh, Afghan loom should be, or is it seven sixteenths? Oh, good gravy. Okay. Well, I need, I need to look that up. Um, but we got to figure out what we can use. Um, it may be that we need to use a Cindy wood loom, uh, at five eighths and it has, um, it has 70, sorry, I'm doing this for loom knitters cause I had somebody ask me about it and, and I told them I'd say on Q and a Monday. So I'm kind of sorry. Um, let me look, let me look. Um, yeah, 78 stitches, but, um, you're gonna need, you're gonna need to, um, I, I'm privy to some extra information. So you'll need, you'll need to go be able to go up to 104 stitches. So, um, anyway, I'm going to have to figure out what, what loom to use and five eights. Maybe I need to order a loom from Cindy Wood. So, um, anyway, Ada says I teach at my hometown. Oh, do you? That's great. Well, you, you need to follow along. <laughs> Oh, Joanne says, yes, her pattern will be in uh, Ravelry today. That's awesome. Okay. All right. And then the other thing is, let's see. So there's a video if you're not familiar. And then the pattern, let me go look at the pattern. I'm going to show you. This is what it looks like for knitting today. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? So this is going to be the first part of your blanket. Oh, gosh. See that? And then, so this is clue one, week one. And, um, and then it shows you all the different skills that you're going to need, all the different abbreviations. So you just need to know how to knit and purl and, um, you know, just some basic stuff to get this pattern going. And of course, if you are on the loom, when you're on the wrong side, um, you're going to do the opposite stitch. So if it says knit, you're going to purl. If it says purl, you're going to knit um, on the wrong side rows for the loom. Uh, and then you, if you're unsure about that, just look at the, um, you're going to look at the chart because the chart actually, um, follows what a, um, a loom would do. So the loom will be, um, like, so if you see, uh, this little dash symbol, it's, you're going to purl. So you purl when you see the dash and you knit when you see it blank. So without too much, of the pattern because I don't want to mess up for copyright stuff, but I just want you to I want you to know that you can follow the chart if you're a loom knitter. If you're second guessing some of the instructions, just make the chart will confirm to you yes you're doing it right because everything on the loom is all right side. So um, Joanne says I think Cindy Wood and Kiss are the only ones I would have enough pegs to do the correct gauge. Yeah, Joanne, um, if you've got if you've got a uh, a Kiss loom that'll get you five eighths. Um, well, not five. Oh my gosh. Well, you, you know how kiss is. So like knit up your sample and then, and then get the, um, get the gauge. 
Um, but yeah, a kiss loom would be perfect. I'm not sure if I have one big enough. I need to go look, but I don't think I do. Um, I probably need to call Kelly. <laughs> She'd probably be like, yeah, use mine. Um, so I think I may actually, <laughs> these big old hoops behind me, I actually think I'll be able to just do it on there. I got to check because I think those might be five eighths. There's one that's a half inch and I'm not sure if both of them are or not. What's the website? Yes. The website is if, if you go, if you, okay. If you, if you forget, go to goodknitkisses.com and click on the blog or hit the search button and type in Bernat mystery stitch along. And then you'll see my blog and my blog has the links to everything. It has the link to the main Joanne page that's going to have your stitch along stuff. It's going to have the link to the Facebook event page that you can um, post your work with hashtag handmade with Joanne. But the page that you get your clue on, sorry, um, I can't even see my computer. Okay, sorry. The page you get your clue and the video each week on Monday is joanne.com. So no dashes on Joanne, joanne.com slash mystery dash stitch dash along and then you can put the little slash on there so um that will be there and then i the i'm not actually seeing the link to the facebook page on there oh no it does have join the facebook page okay so they have they have a you can hover over it where it says join the facebook page you can like hover over it and like click it and um but yeah so Mystery Stitch Along, I think, is the name of that one. I said it earlier, but, you know, <laughs> it's okay. People kind of jump in. Um, so, yeah, so you can download the pattern. Um, I had to, I downloaded it, actually, on my phone so I can have it and kind of zoom in. But um, I'm also going to print it off, too. And it does have a chart. It has a written and it has a chart. And it has a picture of the sample. So that's always helpful. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so you'll see me blogging on that. Be sure and check that out. So I wanted to talk about the things that are new. Um, of course, I'm going to be doing the filming uh, and posting of the um, the next giveaway, which is a review for um, Kathy Norris. Uh, her She worked with Leisure Arts and did a loom knitting stitch dictionary. So I'm going to be um, showing that off. It's just going to be, you know, pretty short because I can't show everything. Um, and of course I'm not, I don't have permission to like show a pattern or anything. So it's not going to be like very long with the tutorial, but I'll show you what I've made with something on there that I think people would be interested in. And then at the end of the review will be a giveaway and you'll have about a week to get in your entries. And then I did want to talk about, um, the, uh, <laughs> the videos that I came out with over the weekend, if you saw that um, we came out with the cross stitch cowl uh, on the zippy, that cowl, um, I'm also going to um, try it on some different looms and kind of show a show that was would be like, um, I think I'm actually going to do one on a, on a uh, kiss loom. Would anybody be interested in seeing me work that up on a kiss loom? Uh, be sure and let me know. Uh, I think I may actually work it up on the dragon. So uh, <laughs> if you know what the, the dragon is, you can go to kisslooms.com or kiss-looms or kisslooms.com, either one, and check them out. And then um, what else? Oh, and then we have the crochet wings, the angel wings. And the crochet angel wings, um, that uh, I just happen to be coming out with it, um, you know, right around the time where people like to dress up during the fall season for fall festivals and also for um halloween and uh, i had someone comment on my video the other day and they said they said that this was perfect because they were dressing their dog up as a flying monkey and they're gonna <laughs> use the wings for a flying monkey which i love um so I cannot wait. I really hope she shares the picture with me. I mean, it was on YouTube, so it's not like, you know, it's like easy for her to share, but I totally can't wait. I love, love, love. I adore, there's like a Dotson, like, I don't remember what the name is. You got, maybe you even know, but there's like a, a dog, the Dotson, the, like the wiener dog that somebody like puts these funny outfits in. And like, I think there's one when he's a hunter and he's got like a jacket on. So it looks like he's like holding a gun. He's like, you know, run around or like he's doing different things. He looks like he's got arms. So yeah. Oh, Ellie. No, I don't know if it's a Toto dog, but I, mean, I think it's supposed to look like the flying monkeys. You know, I'm sure it has like a, 
I can't remember. The flying monkeys have like a vest, you know? <laughs> so Ellie says, yes, on a kiss loom. Never knew about kiss. Just looked it up. Yeah. But the dragon. Yeah. I'm going to do it on the dragon. Yay for kisses. Joanne's totally biased. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I kiss looms. Kiss looms are great. I just, I haven't featured them as much. Um, quite honestly, um, I've been kind of afraid to feature them because um, Kelly does everything like by hand. It's handmade and she keeps up with demand pretty good. But I, I don't, I'm not saying it as a prideful thing, but I, I have a feeling if I push it um, and tell people more about it, then I can actually show it in videos. I, I'm hoping that it doesn't overwhelm her. I mean, it would be a good problem to have, but I'm not I'd like, anyway, so I kind of leak stuff out there every now and then and talk about it, but I am kind of like, eh, I don't, I don't know. Cause it's a really nice specialized loom and it works up fantastic. The stitches are absolutely gorgeous and even. So, um, oh, Ellie says, yep. But Dotson is a hunter. Yeah. So funny. Um, Pam says, I'm going to try those wings. I don't really crochet, but keep trying. Yeah, Pam, it's such a small project. Yeah, I would totally do it. And they're meant to be like fluffy and bumpy and stuff. And so if you mess up, it's probably just fine. So <laughs> um, that stitch is, I know it sounds funny, but that stitch is kind of a messy stitch to me. It is. And so if your gauge is like wonky or something, it actually makes it better. <laughs> I honestly think so. Ellie says the metal pick on the metal pegs might get to me. It's like nails on a chalkboard. I agree, Nellie. There is a learning curve. There is a hump. And that's the other thing. Um, if you don't understand the kiss loom and you don't give it enough time, um, you can find it frustrating. You really have to work through it because after a while, you're like, oh, this is actually flying. Like this is actually going well. Like once you kind of get over some of that learning curve, um, now some people get it on there and they like immediately get it. And then other people, it, it takes them a while. So, um, but once, once you start going, it really, really speeds up. Um, <laughs> Joanne says it's more like the happy clicking of needles. Yeah. Because you can hear it and you're, you know, yeah. But I, I get what she's saying, yeah. And then the top of the metal pegs kind of, you know, um, is a little intimidating because you think, oh my gosh, I'm going to hurt myself or something. But but no, yeah. Um, yeah, once you kind of get it, and like if you if you have always enjoyed e-wrapping, but you don't like the look of that stitch, but you like the e-wrap because it's nice because you can wrap the pegs. Well, what's really cool about the Kiss Loom is you are essentially wrapping because you, you – like if you want to do stocking net and do the knit stitch all the way around, you're, you're weaving. It's not a woven product. It's, excuse me, my nose is just itching today. Um, it's not a woven product, but you're kind of, you're wrapping around the pegs in like sort of a zigzag formation all the way around um, or down. And, and then you're knitting everything over. And so it's sort of that feeling of wrapping. But when, when it starts working up, your stitches are that really pretty uniform V instead of like that crisscross Y, you know, where you get like this bump in the front. And so it looks really nice. Um, the stitches are very even and, um, anyway, hands down, it's just a beautiful product. So jo <laughs> Joanne, how was that plug <laughs> for Kelly? Cause it is really nice. The dragon loom. Um, matches more of like, say the large gauge looms, if you've enjoyed, um, using Nifty Knitter, larger gauge looms, but you want something that you can kind of adjust as far as size, you know, like kind of dial down or up the stitches and things like that. Um, and then they actually have a smaller one called a hatchling. It's even smaller, less pegs. And then the dragon, she's got the kimono, is it the kimono? Kim uh, I'm saying it wrong, the Komodo dragon. And it's like bigger, a bigger version. Like you can get like 15 in pegs or something. Um, Kathleen, good morning from Surrey, British Columbia, Canada. Hey, welcome. <laughs> Glad to have you. So um, 
Anyway, if you are working on a loom, you're going to need 78 uh, pegs, but you will need to go up to, I, I don't have all the rest of it, but I think upwards of 104 stitches. Komodo. Thank you. I was like, I'm going to say that wrong. I'm like, kimono. <laughs> um, and then, okay. So I had this thing and I wanted to chat with y'all about it. Now I have to find the link because it was last week and I'm like, no, I'm going to do that Friday or I'm going to do that Monday. Here it is. Okay. So I saw this article and it said Vogue and Neiman Marcus say fashion bloggers are ruining style and undercutting sales. So I am not a fashion blogger, but I am, you know, I am a YouTuber and, and then the fashion bloggers, it was all about, about YouTubers and bloggers and people and basically what they call influencers. And, um, they're saying, you know, they're, they're ruining things and undercutting sales and people are trying on looks and then like, and then like taking the look and then you know, and then going and completely changing their look, like just because some company like gives them something to try on. And then, then they're like, Hey, this is the thing. And then, you know, kind of just taking fashion week from New York and all those people. And, um, I, I think it kind of applies to what we do. Um, because I think about it, you know, sometimes like, like fashion trends and things seem to happen faster now. Um, now that I'm in the the nitty world, um, I've noticed a different kind of thing. Like, like whenever, and, and this is just a more of a talking point, like discussion. So if you guys want to like chime in, feel free. Um, please do. I'm just interested in your thoughts. I'm not, I'm not, I don't really have a definitive, like opinion on this, like something I'm just kind of processing and thinking through right now. So you're kind of getting me like, not where I'm like, okay, these are my thoughts, you know? <laughs> so um, I'll just kind of read to you. Actually, let me just kind of read to you a little bit what they're saying. Um, and then you can kind of get an idea. It says, as Fashion Week kicks off in Paris today, uh, this is back on September 27th, um, way back when, last week. Uh, one of the two, uh, two of one of the industry's longstanding authorities are throwing shade at the crop of digital influencers who have risen to new prominence in Milan. Fashion Week Roundup from Vogue, for instance, the magazine's creative uh, digital director, Sally Singer, spoke out against the fashion blogger phenomenon. Note to bloggers who change head to toe, paid to wear outfits every hour. Please stop. Find another business. You are heralding the death of style. Added fashion uh, news editor, Asandra Kodinhana, I don't know her name. Uh, <laughs> it seems to be all about turning up, looking ridiculous, posing, twitching in your seat as you check your social media feeds, fleeing, changing, and repeating, which I would have to agree with some of those statements. Okay. Now the second statement, um, you know, as far as like just people being online and looking ridiculous and just like getting paid to do something. And then, then, so they do it and then they just kind of leave it alone. I don't, I don't do that. Um, I only pick up something that I enjoy. Um, so I'll, I'll continue. Hold on. And then Vogue, uh, it says, and Vogue wasn't the only entity to take a swipe at social media in a conference where it reported a fourth consecutive quarterly sales loss. Karen Katz, the CEO of luxury department store in Neiman Marcus also took the opportunity to blame the blogosphere today. Fashion shows are now blogged and broadcast all over the world via social media. She said by the time the merchandise ships many months later, the newness and excitement has worn off. And in many cases, the customer has moved on. Now I will say to what we do, um, you know, I think I tell me what you think, but like, let's say, okay, the Chevron stitch. So we had a lot of people, um, a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago now, um, people were like <clears throat> wanting to do the chevron stitch and they're like, everybody's asking, you know, Hey, I want to learn how to do a chevron stitch. And people were kind of working it out and, you know, messing with it and making lots of different designs. And then all of a sudden, um, it's, so we're pin we're pinning our work, you know, like knitters and crocheters and stuff. Everybody's starting to pin their work. Well, people who are on Pinterest who love fashion and other things, all of a sudden you start seeing these like pillow designs and like glassware designs and all these things that have like chevrons, right? And, um, you're seeing like, it's funny because like, I'll see what we do 
kind of start churning. It takes us a little bit of time, you know, because our stuff takes time to work up. And we're working it up, but then we're pinning and we're blogging what we're doing. And it's almost like the fashion people catch on to it. I'm actually seeing, which I used to think that fashion, like we would get our ideas from fashion, but actually what I'm seeing is we're doing some of our stuff and then the fashion people pick it up and then it starts becoming a heightened thing. And then people who are newer at making um, hand making like, um, crochet and knitting and looming, they'll start being like, Oh my gosh, I'm desperate. I have to learn how to do this. Oh, please, please, please. And then they might want to learn something that's super complicated, but it draws them into the craft, right? Like, Oh, I want to make a pop, you know, this thing with this. And, but it may maybe be like over their head for the moment. And then, um, and then they'll kind of, we'll try and dumb it down or not dumb it down, but like try and make it as simple as possible. Um, and then they'll start working on something else, but okay. So then, then all of a sudden you see it like everywhere, like Joann's and the craft stores and like, like all these, like in Walmart and you're seeing it like just become this fever pitch. And then in the meantime, while it's in a fever pitch, all of a sudden someone goes, you know, aren't owls just so cute. Owls are so cute. Let's make an owl. I want to make a loom knit owl. And so everybody starts making these little owls. Oh, I made a little keychain. Oh, look, I made a bigger one. Oh, look, now I have a hat. Oh, look, I have a hat with a stitch pattern with an owl. Oh, look, I have a bow. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you start seeing these Pinteresty things, and people are like, ooh, owls are really cute. And then they start going, like becoming this bigger thing. And then you see it in fashion, and you see it here, and you see it there. And they're like, now I'm at Hobby Lobby, and I'm seeing this owl in a metal thing over on the side. <laughs> so I just think it's really interesting that these fashion people are talking about some of this stuff. When I've kind of noticed some of these trends, and I'm not an expert and I'm not very affluent at talking about it. Uh, Ellie says, I don't want to roll past what you're saying. Ellie says they might not like the competition they're used to being on the end with all the authority on fashion. And that is true, Ellie. Um, yeah, that's the other thing. So, um, I'm hearing that people who are in television are um, getting frustrated because they're upset with YouTubers who've been in the industry of YouTube for several years now, and they have more clout than the people who are professionals or whatever, who've been on TV. They're like a TV personality. And then they get on, you know, YouTube and maybe they're not received as well. And, um, I think it has to do with your personality. I actually don't, I don't think it's, um, I mean, I don't know when I say your personality, I mean, you're like person, your person, uh, not your personality, like your TV personality, your persona. Yeah, that's probably a better word. So the TV persona and the actual person. So if the actual person who's a TV persona is very engaging and they like to actually talk to people, like I'm talking to you guys and like, I want to hear your feedback and I care about what you have to say and I'm hypey and peppy and you just enjoy me you know, um, or enjoy people who are like that or not necessarily peppy, but like maybe you could be like, cool, you know, but like you like to enjoy talking to those people and, you know, getting feedback and really listening to people. That's different than someone who's like, news at 11, we're going to talk about this, you know, <laughs> they're, they're like, they have this agenda, you know, and then, <laughs> so there's like this disconnect. Do you guys see that am I hitting any nails in the head? I have like no feedback from y'all. I know there's like a 30 second delay on this thing, but I don't know if I'm like in left field. I'm, I'm Kristen, maybe all over the place to you this morning. Tell me if, if I'm anywhere near, but basically I think that's why influencers on YouTube and social media are, um, they connect better with people. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good. I got a couple of hearts. <laughs> Thanks for making me feel better. <laughs> But really, that's what that's what I'm thinking. I'm going to kind of look, talk through just a little bit more of this because I think it's interesting. I hope this is, is not boring for y'all. Um, <laughs> so um, I think it's good to think to 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 really kind of think outside yourself for a moment and kind of see what's going on. It sort of opens your eyes to things. Um, it does make a lot of sense, Bridget. <laughs> Ellie says, I heard about the TV peeps, too. Again, I think they're just being busy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, they, they've had all this clout and everything and then they're like, Oh, you know, but, um, you know, anyway. Okay. Let's see what it sounds like. Okay. It says, while it sounds like each of the aforementioned companies is yearning back to a time when they could serve as gatekeepers to an industry that has now been 
uh, democratize, dem, I'm not even sure what that word is, dem, dem, democratized, democratized, that's not it, I have no idea what that word is, I need to look that up, by social media, notes courts, several high profile bloggers didn't take the comments sitting down, as they shouldn't. Popular vlogger Brian Boy, whose real name is Brian Yambayo, called Vogue's comments schoolyard bullying, plain and simple. And Shay Marie, who counts one million followers in her Peace Love Shay Instagram page, wow, that's amazing, called uh, the storied fashion publication hypocritical. It's ironic how you make degrading comments about influencers and then Put them on your international covers to boost sales. She wrote of Vogue, How many of your covers are paid for head-to-toe looks by brands? What about the daily street style pictures and articles on your website homepage? Why? Because guess what? That's what gets the clicks. So true. So true. I agree with you. I agree with you, Shay. I also agree with you, Brian. But I'm going to hearken back here for a minute because I'm torn when I read this article. You appreciate the information, Kathleen? Oh, good. Thanks, Ellie. Um, oh, not at all, Kathleen says. You think Ellie nailed it? Yeah, yeah, she did. She did. Um, but the gatekeeper comment, gosh, I got to say, as a registered and educated interior designer, who has taken an exam. I went to school. I have a bachelor of science degree. I actually went to school for interior design, not decoration, design. I went to school. I studied hard on codes and building systems and all kinds of things, architecture, um, HVAC, plumbing, wall construction, um, you know, how flow works, how feng shui works, how everything works together. Um, I even studied retail design, seller, studied color theory, uh, you know, just all kinds of things, illustration. So as someone who is a absolute professional in my field, I went to Texas Christian University. I graduated class in 99. I had changed majors and changed schools. So I was at two, one, two years and one for three. So I would have graduated 98. That's how old I am. But I, um, you had to go to a accredited college. There's actually ones that aren't accredited. I had to go to an accredited college. Then when I got out, I had to be in an internship for one year. That's how it worked at that time. I had to be there for one year under a registered licensed interior designer in the state of Texas. And then I could sit for my exam. And then the examination takes two days and it's three parts. It has a 60% fail rate. <laughs> it's super hard. And like the first, the first day, like the first two sections is all codes. It's multiple choice, but it's codes. And what they do is they trick you. So they like write the question and they say, okay, in this situation, and you have to, you have to answer the question first is, um, it's like, if it's, if it's health, safety, or welfare, and you have to like put the answers, like there could be like three right answers. There's actually five. There could be three right answers, but which one's the most right? Because you have to answer the one that hits the health and safety and welfare first. Okay, so if it doesn't fit health, safety, welfare, the, the question's wrong. <laughs> so <laughs> the answer is wrong. So anyway, I had to do that. So as a professional who studied, I could not stand when people started coming out like 15 years ago, like say like HGTV and TLC coming out, television shows coming out and saying, don't you just love this design? Look, I'm going to put moss on a drywall. I'm going to pin cushion it in. Oh, and I'm going to put ungauged slate right on the floor. We're just going to glue it on with regular glue. We're going to use grout to glue it on. That's not okay. That's not setting material. You can't put moss on drywall. Like, like, like literally, you're actually doing a disservice to people because... <laughs> Like you're ruining their subfloor, you're ruining their substrate, you're, you're, ru you're ruining things in people's houses and it's going to fall down, like literally. And so, and so like those things actually matter. And so like, 
But I was the one who was poo-pooing on people years ago. And I'm like, oh my gosh, all these people on HGTV and, um, and, um, um, not as much HGTV, but, um, T, T, TLC. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So the only person I have ever really liked was the lady with divine consign, um, Candace, Can, Candace, anyway, she's actually a designer. There's, there's a few more people now who actually are designers. They actually do things, um, the correct way. But anyway, my, I'm, I'm digressing, but the whole point is, is when you do have a professional who knows about some things, you really should listen to them. Like knitters and, and people like that, go look at someone who has been doing this for 20, 30 years, you know, take a class at your local, um, you know, your local knit store, um, your local yarn store, go take a class at one of the stitches things, you know, really learn hands on some of these things. You know, when I first started, there were some things that I did that quite honestly, weren't the right and perfect way. Now, if I, if I'm trying to like teach you how to be a master, then definitely listen to me because I would have taken some classes and, and I would have gone through the master program. But like when I first started learning, I think I taught some things erroneously and think some of those be, uh, I think some of those videos, um, I disabled if I taught the wrong thing, um, or actually tell you, Oh, I said the wrong name and I like correct it in the, in the description. So I taught you something that's fine, but maybe I said the wrong name. And so it's a learning thing. That's the problem with influence, you know, being influencers. Like I got on here cause I was like, Oh, I want to teach someone how to do it because it helped me. Right. So, um, so I start, I, you know, I start teaching on YouTube and I make mistakes. Here's the thing. Most people appreciate if you say, I made a mistake, <laughs> you know what I mean? But then some other pro in the industry or they, or they throw themselves at the word pro. Um, you know, if they're not, excuse me, if they're not a master knitter or a master crocheter, I'm not going to really call them a pro, but there are ones that are held at a higher standard. And so, um, they might poo poo on something that an influencer does, you know, someone, because someone's more popular than they are. Um, sometimes they'll do it or sometimes it's because they actually did literally make a mistake, but maybe it was something what they did in the very beginning. So I'm just kind of pulling my thoughts together on some of this, but you can see me kind of sound like I'm ranting, but I mean, there are, this article really stirred my head. You can see how it is because I can see both sides of it. Cause I can see it from like my ultra professional level from where I was doing, cause I'm still registered interior designer. I actually have to do 12, um, CEU continuing education units I, every year. I have to take classes and they have to fit, um, health, safety, welfare, barrier free. Um, they have to fit certain code classes and things. I have to do all of that and register every year and pay. So I, I still keep up with professional stuff, but then when it comes to the knitting and all that kind of stuff and influencing, excuse me, I find it very interesting to kind of correlate the two. Um, so my little design thing and TLC, I see Yolanda popped on and she was like, yeah, TLC is the worst. Now TLC, I will say really perpetuated things and got us ready for this big digital age we're in like pinning and all kinds of stuff, because honestly, TLC got that fever for people like DIY. I can do this. And that's exciting, right? I mean, how many people would say they saw something on TLC that got you inspired, right? Um, now, I always thought it was weird that TLC started doing that because I thought TLC was supposed to be like this movie feel good place, <laughs> you know, and then all of a sudden they're like, I'm going to talk about construction and design. I thought, well, that's kind of odd, you know, but it became popular. People really enjoyed it, you know, and, um, anyway, I got to stop. I'm going to continue. Hang on. I'm going to read what Joanne said. <laughs> well, it seems from the tone of the article, they are not critical of the creativity and design. They are mad over their lost revenue. Exactly. Joan, that's it. And that, and that was my next point. So thank you. I'm so glad that you noticed that because it was about their lost revenue, but, um, quite honestly, um, the design stuff, it's really hard to get into and say, but I mean, I would be more about, they need to teach people about, well, actually if it's fashion, they're not teaching anyone about construction. If it was design and someone's just like, Oh, I'm designing something like really you have like sewing bloggers and other 
like fashion DIY bloggers. So that's a totally separate thing. So the, you've got the crafty side and the new designer side versus old school designers. But actually what they're not, they're not talking about that. They're talking about fashion. What's really funny is they're talking about the designers getting upset at the people blogging about it, not actually competing with them, which is really interesting. Um, it's like, I think that basically that what, what these people are saying, the people, this, is my, this hand is my, is the, the fashion people Vogue. And they're saying, Hey, Hey, you over here, you're making us work too fast. Like, stop it. We can't keep up with the demand that you're creating and you're, and, and then you're pointing people back to the, um, the other people who make it, um, to where we have to buy, um, uh, like, like people are just going to buy box stuff. Like, you know, like those stitch fix boxes, you know, you know what happened? Okay. I'm going to explain fashion world. Okay. So what happens in the fashion world? I actually, I don't look it, but I used to model like when I was younger and can I, um, I modeled a little bit. And then also when I was in school, I actually did take some design classes cause I wanted to know how to, um, I actually took lighting for visual presentation was actually my minor. And so I took, took some retail classes, um, which actually fashion, the people in fashion at TCU had to take as well. And then I also did, um, dance where I had to go and like do a pot de deux. I had to light that. And so I got to learn about some of the fashion terms and haute couture, which is way up here. Um, haute couture is when someone makes like one of a kind outfit. Okay. They will take the haute couture. Okay. H A U T couture C O U T U R E. They will take that. Um, yeah. H A U T E actually with the apostrophe. They take that one of a kind design to fashion week. And then what happens is all the buyers around the world, everybody attends and then they go, Oh, that's cool. I want to do that. And then it trickles down and then they, they like start selling their supplies or their, and then they start, it trickles down to the ready to wear the, without going into all the different, there's actually different levels and there's different types of stores and how many fixtures you see in a store and blah, blah, blah. But when it gets down to the ready to wear, which is mass market, like you and I would go, like that's on the rack. Like I go to the store, I pick it off the rack. I go to Lane Bryant because that's where I shop. I go to Lane Bryant and I go, ooh, that looks cute. I can put that on. It's ready to wear. Nobody made it for me, okay? And it's in mass. So when I see that ready to wear thing, then it's done. Then there's other people kind of go off of those ready to wear things and then they start making those other little things like, oh, there's chevrons. Chevrons is the thing. And so then they start making all these like consumables that you can, that are sort of part of that, like part of the color scheme, part of the, the color of the year or the scheme of the year. So anyway, that's kind of how that happens. Um, <laughs> Ellie says, uh, oh, that's why you're always tweaking your lighting here. <laughs> yeah. I w well, if I was really into lighting, I would really have it all like really well lit. It just bothers me when I see it. The other. I'm, I'm too lazy to, and, and cheap to like buy all the cool, awesome lighting. I do have the soft box back here. That, that actually works really well for videos. Um, but I actually have like one of these pop-up things you pull up and it has like a gold foil thing and then like a diffuser and I can like move it around <laughs> if I want to. I don't use it very often. So, Hey, Christine. Oh, the article name. Um, <clears throat> sorry, Yolanda. Um, this is an article on tube filter, T U B uh, F I L T E R. And the name of the article, um, is kind of long and it's Vogue with like one apostrophe, not the two, but, um, okay. So Vogue and Neiman Marcus say fashion bloggers are ruining style and undercutting sales. That's the full title. If I click on the name of the article, <laughs> It says the website, the website name is www.tubefilter.com slash 2016 slash 09 slash 27 slash Vogue, like all these words, but with a dash in between Vogue, Neiman Marcus, fashion bloggers, herding style sales. That's what it is. But anyway, so, I mean, obviously I'm taking my own, you know, liberties with reading this article, but I found it very interesting and thought provoking. And I just wanted to kind of talk about it today. And now you can see why I didn't go into it on Friday for the social media day, 
just because we were talking about um, Etsy and um, people want to know about their stores. Um, Ada says, let's see, sorry. She was just talking to Christine. Cool. Okay. So I have my little rant. I've talked for like <laughs> an hour now. Um, so that's pretty much all I had today. Thank you, y'all. I thought that was very interesting. I don't know how y'all think I fall into that or not. If, if you think if what I said was, um, I mean, if I had a valid point with that, I mean, honest, like I said, I haven't like sat there and said, I am on this side or this side of it because clearly I fall in the category now as a, the YouTube calls us a creator. Um, uh, people brands would call us an influencer. And as far as I'm concerned, um, <clears throat> yeah, I can influence your sales and you know, if what you buy, if you like what I have to say, I take that with great responsibility because I would not want someone treat others as you would treat them, right? I would not want someone who I follow and I trust to do what they're saying. I'm just going to wrap this all up. Do what they're saying about the fashion bloggers. Excuse me. That basically like they get paid to do something. So you're going to look at what I did. And then they don't actually, <laughs> they don't actually use it. They don't actually like enjoy it for a long period of time, they're putting it on because they're getting paid. And that's one of the big reasons by, why whenever I do a review, I don't take any money for it. I do request the product because I need to like see it and mess with it, you know, so if someone sends me the product, I love to give something away. And so I always like to do something where I can give it away to people to enjoy it. But if I find the product is not usable, like, it's falling apart. It's not something that I would use, not anything that I would endorse. I actually don't talk about it. Um, I don't bring it. I don't usually bring it up and I don't usually go. I, I mean, I've never, I've never said, Hey, use this thing because someone's going to pay me to do it. Or someone has given me something. I will never do that. And I think that's really what the heart of this article was, is they were criticizing these people that, that the only reason why they're doing it is because they're getting paid to do it because they become popular and then, um, and then it's cutting sales from them because the sales they would have made is because this influencer is, is helping people buy it. Now, at the same time, people are buying it because they trust the influencer, but my critic, I'm kind of, I guess I'm in the middle. I guess would y'all say I'm in the middle because I, I'm just saying that I think that you should enjoy what you're talking about. Oh, well, yeah, I have ethics. Basically, it's a question of ethics. Really? Ellie, Ellie, you're so good. She just nails it on the head every time because it's all about ethics. And unfortunately, a lot of people out there right now don't care about that kind of thing. But I think the mass majority of people who are buying things and watching these people are ethical and do care. And they hope that the people they're watching are ethical and they care. So that is the difference. <laughs> that is a big difference. So um, at least you know I care. <laughs> but anyway, so back to the other thing that I told you all. I said this is a sponsored thing. I am blogging this week and the next several weeks. And I am working with Bernat. But I'm really, I'm really happy about it because I really did want to be making a knit blanket. I'm challenging myself. I'm asking you to challenge yourself. There is a crochet along. There is a mystery stitch along. I have been sponsored with the yarn. I have been sponsored to write my blog. So I am letting you know. And I have to do this. There's actually a, um, like I said, FTC actually asks you to write when something's sponsored and you will see it in my blog. You'll see it in my videos, everything at the bottom. You'll see like if it's got... If I have affiliate links, which I don't have very many, but if I have affiliate links and if I have, um, it doesn't mean every link is affiliate link. It just means there could be some in there. And if it's sponsored, it will say sponsored. Um, but not everybody does that. And so, um, but I let you know, so you'll see me do it. So anyway, the Bernat Mystery Stitch Along, the, the knitting one, you actually have the host on here right now. Yolanda, put your hands in the air, say, hey, <laughs> 
Yolanda's on here doing the knitting. Mikey with the crochet crowd is doing the crochet. And um, so if you want to crochet, follow him. If you want to knit, follow her. And again, you can go on my website to find all the, um, the links to find the Mr. Stitch Along um, main link for Joann's and then also for the Facebook page. And I will be posting and blogging. So I'm going to head out here now. Oh, there's Yolanda. Uh, and wave <laughs> and wave at them like you just don't care. <laughs> You're so fun. Put your hand in the air. Wave and like you just don't care. <laughs> But we care, Yolanda, you and I, I know you. So we've had some, some good phone call conversations. I, you know what? Someday I'll come to California and I'll hug your neck. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to head out. I've got to go stitch along so I can catch up and blagaroonie for you guys and see what this looks like for me. And if I have a little tip or two and, um, yeah, I'm so glad you joined us. Thanks for welcoming, welcoming her, Pam. Yeah. Waving everybody wave. Give her some hearts. Y'all hit the hearts. Do, 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 do. Anyway, all right. Well, you have a great day. I will see you tomorrow for Illuminating Day and watch your inbox if you're subscribed to YouTube for me for the, um, the uh, review for the book and the giveaway. Have a great day. Bye, y'all.